Hello friends, thank you for watching this video. I am Muhammad and today we'll be resuming our journey to learn Angular. This is part 2 of our series, to cover Angular from all different aspects. You can find the link for the first part in the upper right hand corner and in the description down below. So what are we going to be covering today? First we're going to be discussing custom styles within our components, then we're going to be discussing custom components and how do we integrate them with our main components. Then we're going to be discussing services, how do they work, how do we integrate them. Then we're going to be doing some HTTP calls to our APIs and through that we're going to be discussing observables. As always, you'll find the source code in the description down below. Please like, share and subscribe if you like the video. It will really help the channel. Let us jump back into our source code and see where did we left off last time. So, let's go to Visual Studio Code. And last time... Uh, we have built inside our app our own user components and we have created the user list as well as the template we have created the component as well as we have created the interface so now let us build this application using ng serve dash o and now let's open it in our browser and see the results this will take a few uh, seconds until it builds Great, now that the application has built successfully, now let's open our browser and we can view the application. So inside our browser, let's visit the URL and we can see that we have everything as it should be from last time. Perfect. So the first thing we're going to be doing today is we're going to be adding custom styles to our application. And in order for us to do that, what we're going to be doing is uh, we're going to be utilizing the custom H uh, CSS style that we can add in order for us to uh, to utilize it. And we're going to be adding this to the user component, user list component that we have added before. So the first list, uh, the first thing we're going to be doing is inside the users folder, we're going to be creating a new file, and this file is going to be user dash list dot component.css and this CSS class that we're going to be utilizing here it's only going to be for this component it's not going to be available anywhere else in the application so once we do that let us do some simple uh, table theming so we can so make sure that's working so let's add a table head and then uh, let's give it a color uh, blue for example great now we have done that, the next step that we need to do is we need to let the component know that we have a custom CSS that we want to integrate. So in order for us to do that, we need to go to the user dash list components.ts and inside that list, uh, we need to update the component part. So we need to add styles, URLs, and then since it's expecting an array, we need to open this and then just give it the path for it. So it's going to be user dash list dot component dot css and let's save this and we can see that the application has compiled successfully now if we go back to our web browser we can see that the color blue has already been added to the table header perfect so now that we have done that the next step is for us to discuss uh, nested components what are nested components as we can see here in order for us to have a nested component, we need to have something called a container component. And basically the idea behind nested component is for us to create reusable pieces of code that we can use them across the application. So, for example, if we create some kind of formatting component or we create like, like a star, star rating uh, component or we created something related to phone numbers or messaging service. So instead of rewriting the code across the containers, every component that we want, we need to recreate it. What we can do is we can create a nested component and then we can call that component anywhere we want within our application. So that component will become a nested component and in order for us to have a nested component we need to have our parent com uh, component which is the better term for it is a container component and a container component is the main component that's going to be hosting the nested component so in order for us to do that what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be adding some features to our current application so the first thing we're going to be doing let's go back to our visual studio code and the thing that we're going to be doing is we're going to be adding a cooking uh, rating for any for all of our users so if we go here and let's add cooking rating first of all uh, before we update this part let us update the 
uh, user uh, interface so here uh, we need to add a new one which is called cooking rating and then we're gonna make it a number as simple as that and let's save this and then here what we need to do is for every one of these users what we need to uh, we need to add the new cooking rating that we have added so uh, this cooking rating is just like any random feature that I have added it's just for us to demonstrate the nested component so for now let's add cooking rating and we're gonna give it as one for myself and for Richard we're gonna give it a four and for Neil we're gonna give it a three perfect now once we save it we can see the application has uh, compile successfully so the next step after that is we need to update our view in order for us to take uh, to display these changes so let's go to user dash list dot component dot html and the first thing is inside the table header we're gonna add a new th and we're gonna call it cooking rating and then after the user country we're gonna add a new td and here for now we're just gonna be displaying the number so user dot cooking rating and let's save this and we can see it has compiled successfully now if we refresh and we go back to our web browser and we can see that cooking rating is now appearing as it should be great so in order for us to utilize the stars here so we want to for example display number of stars so for example for me it will be one star for Richard it will be four stars for Neil it will be three stars so in order for us to utilize those stars, we need to utilize Font Awesome. So how do we add Font Awesome to our Angular application? Let's go back to Visual Studio Code. Let's stop the application. And we're going to be utilizing npm to install the uh, Font Awesome package. So npm install font-awesome. Great. So this will take a few seconds to be installed and now it has installed successfully great so now the next step is we need to import the css of font awesome into our application as we have done with bootstrap we need to do the same thing here so let's go to styles.css and here we need to import the same thing so we'll put at import and then we'll do the tilde font dash awesome forward slash css forward slash font dash awesome dot min dot css great so in order for us to know this correct path if you want to verify it once you save it you can go to the node modules underscore modules you can go all the way down okay we can find the folder here font awesome once we click on it, we can see the CSS file folder and then we can see the right path. So it's going to be tilde font awesome forward slash CSS forward slash font awesome dot min dot CSS. Perfect. So now once we have done that, the next step for us is to uh, update our uh, template in order for it to take advantage of this. But before we do any of this, we will want to create a nested component that can be reusable across our application. And for us to do that, we're going to be creating a new folder inside our app folder here. It's called shared. And this folder is going to host all of the nestable component. And inside that shared folder, we're going to be creating three files. The first file is going to be called star.component.html. The second one is going to be called star.component ts and the last one is going to be new file star dot component dot css great so now we have these three files the first thing we're going to be doing is we're going to be creating the template so basically we're going to also utilize here basic uh, bootstrap classes so first of all we're going to create a div class crop and then uh, from, from within that div we're going to create another div of style with let's say put it uh, 75 pixels and then basically inside this div we're going to have stars uh, basically it's going to be span and these spans are going to have the font awesome classes so fa 
fa dash star great and now let's close this and as we said before we're gonna have five stars so one two three four five great so once we have added those the next step for us is to uh, create the uh, CSS for it so let's go to the CSS and let's create some classes so the first class we're gonna be create is the dot crop basically it's gonna be responsible of showing and hiding the number of stars based on the number that we have so here we're gonna make it overflow hidden great and then after that we're gonna put the div class and we're gonna make the cursor pointed perfect so this is for the CSS and the next thing is we're gonna be working on our component so the first thing as we remember when we're creating a component is we need to create a class so we're gonna make export class and we're gonna call it star component and then this star component is gonna be implementing one thing called on change and why do we want to implement on change it means that whenever we click something it's going to be automatically reflected so let's implement it from now we're going to put implement on change and there's another reason that we're implementing on change and this is due to the nested component nature of this component so for now let's just uh, build this component and then we're gonna be explaining in depth why are we doing this so after we have created the class we need to create the component metadata component then it's gonna be like this okay, great and then we're gonna define the selector and we're gonna call the selector uh, we'll call it stars simple as that star Okay, great and then we're gonna basically define the template for it so the template url it's gonna be star dot component dot html and the last one is gonna be the styles that we have created so styles url it's gonna be an array and it's gonna be of type star dot component dot css okay great so once we have done that the next step for us is we need to implement the functionality of on change in order for us to do that we need to put the ng on change method it's gonna return void and basically what we need to do is let's go back to uh, first of all yeah let's go back to our uh, view so as we can see here uh, we have one we have four we have three and these represent the number of stars that going to be showing so we need a way that we're going to be uh, enforcing this number so because this number is going to be co coming from the um, container component and we need to pass this number from the container component to the nested component and in order for us to do that we need to add some uh, variables which is going to be inputting taking these numbers and actually uh, taking it from the uh, container component and passing it through the nested component so in order for us to do that the first thing we're going to be doing is we're going to be adding the rating which is going to be the number we're going to be passing so we're going to put rating and it's going to be of type number and for now we're going to be we're going to be giving it a default value of three and then maybe we can change it later on and then we're going to put the crop width so the crop width as we have said before if we go back to the start component we have given it as maximum width as 75 and this is the maximum number so based on that if we let's say we have three stars uh, so we're going to be making 75 divided by three and then we're going to be masking all of the rest of these stars so how do we do that first we create a variable and this variable is going to be crop width and it's going to be of type number equal to 75 and then based on that on the changes basically what are we going to doing we're going to be calculating how much is going to be crop based on the rating number so this is going to be this because we're going to be calling the crop width going to update that because the crop width basically hides it uh, hides whatever we don't need it's going to be equal this dot rating 
multiply by 75 divided by 5 75 divided by 5 so why do we do use uh, 5 because we said we're gonna have 5 stars and 75 is the width so we're gonna be dividing the 75 by 5 and then we're gonna be multiplying it by the rating so we know exactly how much are we gonna be covering out of those 75 okay great so once we have added all of those now it's time for us to uh, nest the com uh, this component inside our uh, main components our, our so how do we do that it's very easy inside the user list component instead of using the uh, user dot cooking rating what are we gonna be doing we're gonna be calling the star so we're gonna put star and then we're gonna be closing it but right now this is gonna be closing an issue why because right now angular does not know about this new component we need to add it to our app module.ts so in order for us to do that we need to go to app.module.ts and here we need to import it so we're gonna put import we're gonna call it star component and then this is gonna be from and then we have to go to the shared folder so shared and then it's gonna call start component great and then once we do that all we need to do is we need to add it to the imports to the declaration sorry and then now we have the star component let us build our application and see what do we get so ng dash uh, ng surf dash o this should take a few seconds perfect now if we go back to our web browser we can see that the stars are showing but there's an issue we are always seeing five stars although for muhammad we have put one star for richard we have put four stars for neil we have put put three stars all of them uh, all of them has still five stars which is not the right case in an application like that we, the nested components will need to communicate with the container component and the nested component will be able to receive the uh, information from the container component through something called the input properties and we're going to be discussing what are input properties in a few minutes so the nested components uh, so basically it's going to be a two way conversation so let us go through the visual studio code and we can discuss it so the nested components going to be receiving information through something called input properties but then the way that's going to the nested components going to communicate back to the container component is through emitting events and for this reason we need to uh, we have added here the on change events so on change event will be able to send back information and we have to add this information here as well as we need to update our rating variable in order to be make to make it as an input component so the first thing we're going to be doing here is the rating number the rating variable we're going to update it uh, to make it an input and to do that all we need to do is input and then make it uh, like that so this will make uh, this uh, variable inside our nested component and input component which means that the uh, container component will be able to define this variable from their side before actually it's initialized here so that's the first thing the second thing as well we're going to be doing is we're going to be adding some information to our uh, template so if we go back to the template we need a way here to display as well how much are we going to be showing uh, the uh, the stars so we need a way to control this so we need to control somehow to control the width and how do we do that so from here all we need to do is add the following so styles styles dot width dot pixels and we're going to be passing the crop width that we have and then we're going to be also passing the title which is going to be the rating that we have great so now that we have these basically what we have the reason we have added this so for example let's say we did all of the calculations here and instead of 75 it's now 60 for example the 60 is basically gonna be the width here is gonna be 60 instead of 75 and here we're just gonna be displaying the number so if it's 3 it's gonna show 3 it's 5 it's gonna be show 5 it's 1 it's gonna show 1 and after that what also we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be updating our uh, user list uh, 
template in order for us to take advantage of that input that we have added so here instead next to the star what we're going to be doing is we're going to be adding the rating which is our input and then basically we're going to be passing the variable that's going to be coming through our model from there so this is going to be equal to user dot cooking rating so right now what we're doing is we have opened this variable from that component itself here so we make it as an input variable and this input here is we are able to actually communicate through it from the container component and actually from the container component we can actually set it up but for the second one if you see here since we didn't uh, make it as an input we are not able to access this directly from the container component but for the input for the rating we have made it as an input so we are able to access it we can have as many as we want input uh, com uh, input variables but for now we only have one so let's go back here and we have updated this so let's put let's save this make sure it's actually building okay great now let's go back to our web browser and let's refresh and we still have the same thing oh sorry i didn't save this let me save this and let's go back to our web browser and now we can see here that the actual stars are actually reflecting the number of uh, from the user that they are coming so for muhammad it's one star for richard is four star for neil is three stars let's change the data and we can see it's actually updating so i want to change my rating from one to five and richard from four to one for example and now let's save this and now if we refresh this we can see that the information has automatically been updated so mine have one to five stars and richard one to one stars perfect let's return it as it was and now the next step that we're going to be doing is we want a way and this is only for demonstration process is we want a way to uh, send information back from the nested component to the parent component or to the container component how do we do that for all this is like a very dumb functionality that we're going to be adding but for this uh, for the purpose of demonstrating what we are what we're going to be doing is once i click on this it's actually it's going to display next to the title here the number of uh, stars that we have shown again this functionality is very dumb but we're just going to be uh, going through it to display how are we going to be uh, sending information back from the nested component to the container component through emitting events so the first thing that we're going to be doing is we're going to be updating our star component and we're going to be adding some stuff to the import. So the first thing we're going to be adding is the event emitter and the second thing is going to be the output. So the event emitter will allow us to actually emit events and the output will allow us to send output back. Great. So once we have done that, the next step that we're going to be doing is we're going to be creating a variable that's going to be responsible to sending the output back. And this variable basically is going to be some kind of event emitting so we can capture it from the container component. So how do we do that? First of all, we need to put at output. So that will tell the, that will specify that the variable that we're going to be creating now is basically for output. And then we're going to be making the star clicked or yeah, star clicked. And then after that, basically we're going to make it of type event emitted. Event emitter great and then based on that what are we going to be sending back we're going to telling that it's going to be sending back a string and then basically we're going to be initializing it great and we're going to say that's going to be of type string and that's it great so now we have created sorry so now that we have created this uh, event emitter and we have made of type output the next step for us is we need to uh, add an on click event so once we click on those stars it's actually going to be emitting that event back so there's two places that we need to update first we need to add this functionality here from within the component and second we need to update our template so first let's create this functionality we're going to be creating the on click function and basically this is going to be of type void and what it's going to be doing something very simple which is this dot star clicked it's going to be uh, emitting an event and this event that we're going to be emitting it's basically going to be saying the rating and let's put this 
and this the rating is gonna be this dot rating and was clicked as simple as that nothing really too fancy great so once we have done that the next step for us is we need to update the actual uh, template so from here we're gonna add uh, a new functionality to this div and it's gonna be basically the click event so click and then we're gonna put the assign to the on click function great so now that we have created this functionality from inside the nested component we need somehow to let the container component know that it needs to receive some kind of information back from the uh, nested component so how do we do that also very simple first let's go to the user list component.html and from here we need to add uh, the method that's going to be basically accepting this uh, event that's being emitted from the nested component so we're going to call it uh, I think it was called star clicked yes because this is gonna, this is the event that's going to be emitted and from there on we're going to be basically assigning uh, a function from within this new uh, this component the container component that's going to be receiving this event and we haven't created this function yet but we're going to create it we're going to be calling it on star clicked and basically it's going to take an event perfect so once we have done that now what we need to do is we need to create this function inside the class so let's go to the end and let's create this function and basically as we said it's going to be receiving a message so as because we have specified it as a string so we put message and it's going to be of type string and it's going to be of type void it's not it's gonna, sorry it's going to return void and then basically what we're going to be doing is we're going to be binding this message that's coming back from the nested component into the title that we have here just for display it's nothing nowhere else this function is completely useless we just wanted to show you how you can send back events from the nested component to the parent component so this dot page title equal when we're going to make it user list and then we're going to put plus message great so once we have done that and all of this information has been added successfully uh, the next step that we need to do is let's test it out so now we have saved we can see it's compiled now let's go back to our web browser and let's try to click on one and we can see that the title has been updating which is user list rating one has been clicked if i click on this we can see rating four has been clicked and if I click on that rating three was clicked perfect so now this is uh this is was the last step that we wanted to cover when it comes to nested components so let's do a quick overview of what did we cover so the first thing we did is we have created a nested component let's go back to visual studio code inside the shared folder and we have created the css we created the template as well the class for it and then we have defined the uh, variables which is going to be the rating and the crop width since we're going to be changing this event based on when, whenever it changes we have added the on change uh, implementation and then we have created the cropped width uh, functionality based on that and the next step that we did is we have we were able to take the input from the container component to the nested component through creating the rating which is an input variable and once we created the input variable inside so basically we convert that rating variable to something called an input variable and then we were able to pass data from the container component to the uh, nested component and here we see we are passing the rating directly to the user and then the third and final part that we did is was sending back event from the nested component to the parent component and the way we have done uh, to the container component excuse me and the way we have done that is through event emitting so what we did is inside the uh, star component we have created a new output event which is going to basically outputting something outside that component and we have created a new event emitter of type string and we have initialized it and then what we did is we created a new method which says on click whenever and then we assigned this method to that div so whenever we are clicking on that div it's automatically uh, ref uh, creating the string and sending it back to the container component and within the container component here we have what we have did is we have created our own method called start clicked from inside the container component so it's going to be receiving this event 
and basically it's gonna be very simple once that event is being received it's actually just displaying the message to the title okay great so once we have finished all of that the next step for us to discuss is services so what is services components are great but if we want to share information between different components how can we do that if for example we have certain type of data that we want to have available for all different components and we don't want to reuse the code we cannot really accomplish that using components so the way we are able to do that is through services so services is a class that has a focused purpose and this focus service class is basically has certain imp certain functionality that can implement and it will basically be available for all of the components that we want or it could be available for only one certain component so we can use services to share data across different components we can basically use it to do some api calls we can use it to do some logging we can actually use it any way we want and as as i mentioned before it can be for all the components we can link it to be available for every component or we can create them to be available for only one single component so let us discuss how we can uh, initialize those services and how we can uh, and the two different ways that are available for it so in order for us to initialize a service as we have said there's two ways there's something called direct initialization and there's something called dependency injection so what is direct initialization and what is dependency injection so Direct initialization, as we can see here from this graph, is basically from within the component, we directly initialize that uh, service that we want. So basically, we call the class and we create a variable and we can utilize it. This methods work, but it's not really recommended because the data that's going to be generated with, within that comp uh, from within from that service is only going to be available to that component itself. Specifically, if we have created that service to be available across the component, it doesn't really make sense to, to initialize it from inside one component and keep the data only from within that one component so the second option is to utilize to utilize something called dependency injection so how do we utilize dependency injection basically is we register our services with angular angular then creates a single instance of that service and a single instance of that service is called a singleton and then it holds that instance and uh, with angular services and it's going to be sharing it across different components angular provide a built-in injector which is responsible for injecting this instance into the component when a component needs a service all it needs to do is just call that service through its constructor and it will be able to have it so as we can see here from the graph that we have is we have the service here which is called my service and basically instead of initializing it what we're doing here is we are uh, initializing it from the within the injector and whenever any components will need this service it's basically from within the constructor it's calling the my service and basically uh, from within that constructor it automatically be able to get an instance of that service directly without the need to initialize it in every single service independently now to understand this better, let us build our own service and we can discuss how everything fits together. Let's go back to Visual Studio Code. And the first thing that we're going to be doing is since we are going to be creating our own service uh, and this service is going to be belonging to the user. So it makes sense that we're going to create this service inside the users folder. So inside the users folder, we create a new file and this file is going to be called user service great and the first thing as we do always when it comes to creating uh, anything with angular is we need to create a class so first we need to export class user service great uh, sorry i forgot to put the extension .ts. great so once we have done that so the next thing is we need to add the add injectable metadata to make this uh, user service injectable whenever we want so how do we do that is we just put add injectable and we can see here that angular automatically did the importing for us great so now this service is uh, we have initial initialize it to be part of the dependency injection just because we have added this information here this metadata here so the next step is what we we're gonna plan to do with this service is instead of hard coding all of these uh, users here what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be removing this from here and adding them to our service and after that we're basically gonna be 
calling an HTTP an API endpoint in order for us to get the users. But for now, we're just going to be moving this logic from the component to the service. Okay, great. So the next thing that we're going to be doing is we're going to be importing the user interface. So we are able to use it here. A user from user. Great. Next is we're going to be creating a method which is going to be called get users. And this method basically is going to be returning an, an array of our users. Great. And this array basically is going to be the same information that we have uh, before. So what we need to do is we can put a return. And from here, we can just take all of this. And let's make it this empty for now. And let's make this return like this. Perfect. Okay, we have this method. We have this array. Okay, get users. Oh, we forgot to put the brackets. Okay, great. So once we have done that, now we have the users available. Now let's update our component in order for us to take advantage of this. So how do we do that? Uh, first of all, we need to, in, to make sure that this uh, service that we have created is injectable. So although we have added here the add injectable, we didn't really specify where are we going to be injecting it. Because as we have mentioned before, we have two places that we can inject a service. The first place that we can inject a service is uh, directly into the Angular uh, services where it's going to be available across all different components. But the second part is we can actually inject a service directly into a component where that service will only going to be available inside that component and not everywhere else. So. How do we inject the service to be available across different components? It's very easy. So inside the injectable here, all we need to do is add a new uh, variable if you want field. It's called provided in, and then all we need to do is specify that field to root. And as simple as that, now what we did is we have uh, let Angular know that this actual service is going to be available across different components without any extra work or anything extra that we need to do from our side. Angular is going to be handling all of the heavy lifting when it comes to that. And from our side, we're going to be just directly utilizing or referring to this service from the component that we need to. So now let's go back to our user list component.ts. And now let's see how we can utilize this. So as we have said before, if we if we are planning to use dependency injection, the only way for us to actually call that uh, service and to initialize it from within our component is through the constructor. And basically a constructor of a class is initializing different items that the class, uh, that the component will, will need to utilize it. So how do we do that? We need how do we can create a constructor is we just put constructor. And then basically what we need to do is make it a private and then we're gonna call it user service and then user service as simple as that and then make this empty like this so what we did here is we have created a constructor and then from within the constructor from its parameters what we did is we just initi initialize the user service and now after we have initialized the user service is basically we are able to actually utilize it so here we have uh, refer to the actual user service and here we are actually created a variable that we can actually utilize across the application great so once we have that now we can actually the first thing that we're going to be doing is after that we have set the users to not the to not to not an empty array we need to actually populate this array with the information and you might think to yourself, oh, maybe the best place to put this is inside the constructor because basically we are constructing the component. No, if you remember from our previous video, it's basically um, Angular have something called the life cycle. And the best way to initialize stuff specifically that is going to be referring to APIs in order for us to get data is 
to utilize one of those life cycle, life cycle and it's called is on uh, angie on init so how do we do that we'll put first first what we need to do is we need to refer to that list so users equal this dot user service that we have just created and get users as simple as that and then after that it's basically gonna uh, make this user list available but there's gonna be one problem that we have here and now let's see it if we go back to our web browser we can see that this table is empty although we are getting the information correctly why is that because here inside the uh, the ng on init is basically we are doing the filtration and we are utilizing the uh, filtered list in order for us to filter user list in order for us to populate it and because this uh, list uh, the, sorry the user list is coming on the ng in it so it's coming after uh, the initial filtration is being done so how do we fix that it's also it's going to be very easy all we need to do is this dot filtered list filtered users equal this dot users and once we do that it's built successfully let's go back to our web browser and we can see it's actually being populated successfully great so the next step after that is to update this further and to create and get the information that you want through http calls so the next step is we're going to be discussing observables because they're going to be a key component into understanding http calls so so what is observables observables is a collection of items over time so basically, if we can see here from the picture, we have an array and we have an observable. We can see from the array, it's like a list of items that always gonna be exist within an array. So once we initialize that array, all of these items that are gonna be available for us anytime that we wanna use. Observable is a bit different. So observable is like we are uh, monitoring a stream of information coming in. So first of all, for example, we receive the first bit of information, then we receive the second bit of information, then the third and the fourth. So basically, as they come, we are processing them. We are not storing them one at a time as we have in an array and we can access them all at the same time. Basically, once we receive a piece of information, we process it. Once we receive the second piece of information, we process that as well. And after that, we don't really keep track of all of those uh, information that they have uh, come before that so what's the benefit of observables observables allow us to have something called notifications and basically there are three types of notifications and these notifications will allow us to send information to any http call that have uh, that are requesting information from an api so what are these notifications there are three so the, the first one is next it means that we have received the first uh, response from the api and we are waiting for the next one the second notification is the error it means something has went wrong and we stop all of processing and we have display or we have created some logic to handle this error and third one is the complete it means that all of the information that we are expecting from the api call has been completed successfully and there's nothing else for us to do and we and we basically terminate the observable for on that uh, aspect and those uh, notifications but you might ask okay we have observable we have notification but how do we actually know that this notification are coming in so in order for to do that uh, observables provide us with something else called uh, subscription so basically let's think about it as we uh, like uh, uh, SMS notification, something like that. So whenever or a push notification, so whenever we uh, subscribe to this uh, notifications or to this uh, observable request, uh, the obs the observable we're gonna be sending notification to anyone who have subscribed. So right now we're gonna throw an example to see how we can actually subscribe to a notification uh, to an observable and how we can get those notification. But for now, let's think of notification that whenever I create an observable, I subscribe to what information do I wanna get from that observable and then the RxJS, which is the obs uh, observable library from within Angular is gonna be responsible to handling all of that notification sending and receiving. So once we have discussed observable now let's go through http calls and what they are so basically when it comes to http call what we need to do is uh, we need to prepare that http call which is going to be a get request because we are getting information from that api the second is we're going to be specifying the observable as we have mentioned before an observable is the list of items that's going to be passing through and we're going to be processing as they are arrived and then we're going to be processing 
the notifications and the notifications are basically are the observable notifications which are of three types as we have said before the next the error and the complete and once all of that are uh, processed are prepared we need to subscribe and we said okay what i want only to be notified when the next piece of information come and whenever there's an error for example so once we have done all of these four steps the last step for us is to send the http request to the api once we send that HTTP request to the API, the, the Angular application can continue working without actually waiting for the API to come back because it's an async request. An async request means that we are not waiting for the information to come back to continue processing. On the other hand, a synchronous request means that every request that we do needs to be processed before we can start another one so it's like sequential when it comes to synchronous request but an async request means that we can actually start different uh, requests at the same time without us having the need to wait for the uh, original request to be completed so right now because http is always async so we the application can actually resume working without waiting for the api to return its data and once the data is actually returned from the api the observable will be able to actually capture that data and actually send an event and because we have subscribed to those events we'll be able to receive an, uh, this event and telling us okay the API has returned your data and once we have received those data we are actually able to process it and then we can actually display it to the user so this is uh, all of the theories that we were going to cover uh, this is a very uh, basic uh, and very introductory uh, slides of how what are observables and what are http calls but this should be give you a good introduction of how do they work what is the basic uh, idea behind them and now once we this uh, we write the code for those it will be much more easier for you to understand it great now let's jump back to our visual studio code and inside visual studio code the first thing we're going to be doing is we're going to be adding the http module to our application so how do we do that inside the app dot module dot ts we need to add here the http module so we need to import it so let's add it import it's going to be called the http client module from at angular forward slash common forward slash http great so that's the HTTP client module and now we need to add it to our imports and here what we need to do is just paste it and perfect now we have the HTTP module available for us so the next step is we need to update our user uh, service.ts great so how what are we going to be uh, doing here so what we're going to be doing is uh, we're going to be adding the HTTP uh, ability to do the calls to the API so first of all let us uh, import the HTTP here so basically we're going to do import HTTP client and it's going to be from at ang angular forward slash common forward slash http great and the h needs to be capital okay great so once we have that http client available and ready for us now let us delete all of these because we don't really want them right now we're gonna be getting them directly from the api and we need to have the body for this function perfect the second thing we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be actually injecting the http into our constructor so we need to define a constructor here perfect and then it's gonna be basically private http colon http client great so once we have that saved the next step for us is to actually update our get users in order for us to be able to uh, get uh, the information from our api so just before uh, we do that we usually need a certain api uh, backend in order for us to provide us with this information so what i did and it's going to be attached to this solution and to this uh, source code is going to be a sim very simple asp.net core application which is only going to return us a list of users so uh, let me run this application uh, basically this is going to be the application that i'm speaking of i've prepared it earlier all we're going to do is let me run it dot not run 
it's gonna build perfect i think it's on port 5000 and now let's go to port 5000 here localhost port 5000 users and we can see that we got all of the users directly from the api and this is only that this is the only thing that the api is doing and this is gonna be uh, attached to the source code so you are, so you don't so you do have access to it so for now let's go back to our visual studio code and let us first create the uh, url for that api so private uh, user url it's equal let's copy paste it directly from the web browser okay great perfect so the next step for us is we're gonna be basically doing the http call so how do we do that we're gonna do return this dot h we're gonna be utilizing the http client and then we're gonna put get of type i user array because basically this is what we're gonna be getting and then we're gonna be passing it the url that we're gonna actually connect to to get this information so user url and then basically we're gonna use something called pipe what is pipe pipe is the method that we specify in order for us to set some operators and operators are basically some built-in http functionality that angular provide for us in order for us to first to facilitate uh, the debugging process or facilitate any uh, uh, any uh, processing that we want to do to the information that's coming through the observable so we're going to be using pipe so dot pipe and then from that point we just need to create a parentheses and the first uh, operator that we're going to be using is tap so tap means that is we're going to be tapping into the information that the observable are coming and we're going to be actually checking them out so we open this tapping thing the tap uh, operator and then we create an arrow function and basically from that arrow function all we're going to be doing is we're going to be logging out the data that's coming in so we're going to be console.log and that's going to be only the uh, we're going to put uh, api response and then from that point forward all we're going to be doing is utilizing the javascript json.stringify which is a built-in javascript function which is going to be converting any object that's coming through the api to a json file uh, to a string from a json and then after we do that the next uh, operating that we're going to be uh, tapping into which is called catch error catch error okay great and basically right now instead of utilizing an arrow function what we're going to be doing is we're going to be calling an actual function that does not exist yet but we're going to create it so this dot error error handling great so once we have those let us create uh, one more thing that we want to add because we're not really returning anymore uh, the i user we're gonna be returning an observable so we need to change this to an observable so let's add it here observable and then let's update this like this so right now basically we are returning an observable great so for tab i don't think it's initialized it's, it's recognizing it because maybe we need to uh, add it so let's add it here so basically we're gonna put import we're gonna utilizing both of them this is gonna be the catch error as well as the tap and these are all part of the uh, uh, rxjs functions so from rxjs forward slash operators perfect it needs to be operators great so now what we need to do is we need to uh, actually create this uh, error handling method and how do we do that it's also very easy so basically we're going to create a method here called the private error handling and then basically it's going to take an error and of type http error response and then all we're gonna do is we're gonna be uh, logging out this method and then rethrowing it so console dot log err and then we're gonna be basically return throw 
new so throw error and then basically we're gonna just throw the error message we're gonna make it an empty string or we can yeah we can make it error dot message instead of this okay great so now that we have updated our observable <coughs> excuse me and now that we have able to return it the next step is we need to update our user list component in order for us to take advantage of this observable so let's go back to the user list component and basically what we need to do is we need to update these two lines here so let's comment these out and let's, cre let's uh, create our own uh, brand new code in order for us to adjust for the observable so the first thing we're going to be doing is we're going to be utilizing the user service so user service that we have dot get users because this is what we currently uh, having in order for us to get using through the http call and then basically as we said we need to subscribe to that uh, request and basically we're going to be uh, listening to what's coming in through the notification so first we're going to be listening to the next and this next is basically we're going to define users and then from that point forward basically we're going to do this dot users equal to users so what we're what we're doing here is first of all is the next is the first uh, a piece of uh, it will give us the first information that's coming back from the api and it's basically saving it into this users variable and basically what we're doing here as soon as it comes to the users variable we are saving it to the user list that we currently have from before and after that because as we have said it will not there we are not filtering uh, we are displaying the information on the ui side and the template side based on the filtered user we need to do the as assignment between the user list and the filtered users from now so for this we need to do this dot filtered users equal this dot users great and then uh, the last thing that we need to do is we need to adjust if there's any errors that we need to follow so it's going to be error it's going to take the error and then it's going to have an arrow function this dot error message equal err and what is error message basically we need to create a new variable uh, called error message in order for us to detect any errors that might be coming back so what we can do is just like this i put the type of string and make it empty okay great so once we have this ready Uh, we need to make sure that our API is still running perfect now let's go back to our web browser and let's refresh and we can see that the information is actually coming as it should be and let's basically let us uh, update information directly from our uh, API so this is the API let me stop it and I'm gonna change for example my name to my full name and I'm going to change my phone number to 88998898988. I'm going to put my uh, cooking rating to uh, 3, for example. And then I'm going to change, uh, uh, let's say, Richard's phone number to 00000. And let's save this and run the API again. All you need to do is just get the source code and type .net run. It should automatically run on port 5001. So now this is running. And if I refresh this here, I should see the information has been updated. Muhammad Talal Lawand, as well as the phone number has been updated. And now if I go through the app and I refresh it, we can see the information has been automatically populated from the API. And we can see that my name has been updated. My rating has been updated as well as our if we click on show phone numbers we can see that my phone number has been updated and Richard's phone number has also been updated perfect so this is where we're going to be uh, finishing for today uh, this basically covered uh, different aspects of uh, angular from components to, from nested components to services to observable to http calls uh, please write any question that you might have in the description down below and thank you very much for watching this video if you have any questions or any suggestions please also write it in the description down below uh, we're going to be continuing this application by adding some more functionality and more integration with our API maybe authentication if you have any other suggestion as well please mention it in the description down below thank you very much for your time and have a good day